while, a little while ago, I had Dr. Sonia Stribling come to Tampa and I interviewed her on our YouTube channel. And to be honest with you, I, it seems like y'all like her better than y'all like me. So, <laughs> so uh, but in all seriousness, though, her interview was one of the best interviews we've ever had and one of the most popular interviews we've ever had. We brought her back. She's got some amazing things going on. She's got a new book coming out. She's got a, a live event coming up. Dr. Sonia is out there demonstrating, not just pontificating, but demonstrating how women can do great things in the marketplace and conquer in business. Dr. Sonia, so glad to have you with us today. Thank you for having me, but I surely doubt. I'm probably, that's not the truth, that they love me more than they love you. They love you. They yes. just love the fact that you allow some amazing women on your show. There you go. There you go. Okay, we'll, we'll go with that. That way it doesn't turn into a full-blown conversation about that. <laughs> All right. <laughs> All right. So, Dr. Sonia, you've got some amazing stuff coming up. You've got the Schedule Your Payday event coming up. Mm -hmm. You've got the new book from the battlefield to the boardroom coming yes. out soon. Man, what else you got going on? Oh, I can't share that. You other can't share everything. Stuff. Can't we share have everything. this movement for women that movement. we're doing. Oh, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. okay. Quite a few things. Movements. Movements. Okay. I like the sound of that music. Yeah. So, what's the movement do? Oh, that's right. You said you can't talk about it. But well, if you were going to talk, if you were yeah. going to talk about it, what, well, you know, it's um, one day I was sitting. Mm -hmm. And minding my own business, mm -hmm. like I normally do. Mm -hmm. And it's just this desire that, it, I call it infinite desire. There's okay. a difference in the mm -hmm. two. And infinite desire, there's always something happening where you desire more okay. than where you are. Mm -hmm. And it was just this whole ask of God of, what's, what's next? What, I feel like something's supposed to be happening or something's about to happen. And then this whole thing, and I began to feel something of, how do you not just be the only woman at the table mm. with a multi-million dollar company? How can you bring other women along with you? Mm. And this is where the wealth distribution movement came for women because the world, the government, <laughs> says that we have two options. Okay. And, and if I may, Myra, let me go ahead and share this because I know there are some men like, hey, you're leaving us out. I'm not. I'm just helping your daughter, your mom, mm. your sister, your wife, women that you love step up to the plate. Mm, so good. And do even the more um, amazing things that they do. So the wealth distribution movement came up because I wanted more women to have the opportunity because the world, again, says we can get a job or we can start a business. But there has to be more than mm. those two things that are out there. And so we decided to, um, and I say they, this is God and I. Mm. I believe this is a God idea okay. of helping and starting this wealth distribution movement where women can join in. It's almost like Wall, Wall Street. They okay. can come into a place in a space where companies are already operating at level 10 and they can join in and not just have a job and not have a business. But this is now the unity of women coming together so we can lift each other up instead of tear each other down. Mm, so good. So good. Yeah. You know, it's interesting. I've observed in, a, in many organizations. I can't say most because I haven't measured, right? Okay. So I have to say many. In many organizations, in many situations in life, it seems to me that women definitely work harder than men in many situations, in many organizations, in many churches, in many businesses. Um, women work harder than men. And even in families sometimes, you know, uh, the husband and wife, they both work outside the home, but when the wife comes home, more work begins, yes. it seems. And so, yes. so um, like hats off to you for creating um, a movement for women to be able to not just step up to the plate in the work arena, but to step up to the plate in the wealth arena. Yes. Oh, yeah. I love that. Oh, yes, absolutely. Yeah. It's necessary and it's needed. Mm. Um, the generations where we come from, some of the, we didn't get these opportunities, mm -hmm. at least not in my culture. Right. We didn't. Right. And now it's like we're, we get the opportunity now as women to stand on you know, we think about our ancestors and the women that came before us that did some amazing things. Sure. You know, we know our history. They gave us, you know, Women's International Day. Mm -hmm. They gave us women, Women's History Month. Mm -hmm. And I start looking at that thinking, you know, we don't have to start from ground zero. We get to stand on the shoulders of some powerful women mm. that are out there. And what I wanted to do was give women, whether I'm coaching them in their business, helping them get to the next level, or those who chose to join the movement with me, they get to start on my shoulders and not at ground zero. Mm, so good. It's, it, it's interesting when I look at people in their lives who believe that they lack access 
They think they lack access to funding. They think they lack access to coaching. They think they lack access to capital. And what they really lack access to is awareness of the access they actually already have. Um, would you say that that's true also about a lot of women? They have way more access than they know they have, but since they don't know they have it, they don't access it? Oh, absolutely. And it's just access to the things that they need, but even access to the power that they have. Mm. Can you imagine having so much power in you and someone else is telling you, like, what are you talking about? Where is it at? I don't know what you're talking about. Mm. And we can see it, but what if you get in the room, right? Get in those rooms with people that um, lift you up and share those things about what they can see. Because sometimes you can't see it for yourself. Real someone talk. else has to be around you to say how amazing you are. Mm. And the other thing, you've heard me say it before, and just giving yourself permission. And again, mm. validation is for parking tickets only. I need a whole t-shirt that says validation is park parking tickets only. We don't, mm. we shouldn't. I would highly recommend that we don't continue through our life looking for validation from other people mm. and really stepping up to the plate and say, you know what, I'm validating myself. I don't need, I want support. I want people to cheer me on, but if I don't get it, where can I go and find those people who will celebrate me and not mm. just tolerate me? Come on now. <laughs> wow, so good. So good. And I, I'm, I'm glad that rooms like that exist where there are people who actually don't feel threatened by your success. You know, there are Talk about that, brother. Talk yeah, about that, yeah, please. It's, 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 it's people who have an awareness that nothing's missing. Um, they don't believe and feel like because you have more, that means they have to have less. They don't believe that the reason they have less, if they have less, is because you have more. Mm -hmm. Right? So in those rooms, as you called it, um, you're celebrated, not tolerated. And that's a beautiful thing, because being tolerated is not fun. Yeah. Celebrated, yes. mo' better, mo' but you better. you said something to me a while back. Okay. And this is what I appreciate with you, about you, being my mentor, being my brother. You said something, and I don't think you realized what you said, and it was just, yeah, you're like, what did I say, what did I say? Yeah. We were in a room, mm -hmm. Clearwater, Florida, mm -hmm. And I was asking you a question about some mentorship or some other groups or something, and you said, and these are my words, or what I heard. Mm -hmm. You said, what it is about you, anyone that gets around you is gonna wanna collaborate with you. Mm -hmm. If they're comfortable in their own skin and they don't feel threatened by your success or the power that you possess. Mm. And I don't think you realize that I've had to deal with that my entire life. Well, dummy it down a little bit. Don't say anything when you go in the room. Don't wear that outfit because it's gonna make people feel uncomfortable and all of that. So I have to had to deal with that. And mm. as I retired from the military after 21 years, I dealt with it there. Then I came into the civilian world, started a business, and mm. normally I'm the only woman in the room. And if there are other women, and this is not always the case, let me right. make sure I say that, but there are times where I feel like that I have to dummy myself down or people feel threatened. And that's not my intent. I stand in such of essence that God has given me, and I decided not to dummy myself down, and more so to start environments or movements or create rooms where women can come in and feel safe and not feel threatened. Safe to be and feel powerful. Yes, mm. and not feel like, well, no, I, I can't celebrate my wins. I can't celebrate having a million dollar company because I don't want anybody to feel less than. That is a real feeling for us. And I don't know if men feel that way, but I know I've had I'm to sure deal with that. I'm sure there are some men But way. not you. <laughs> this, but this ain't one of them. <laughs> but not you. <laughs> this but is it, not one of them. It is a real thing. So when you said that, it was just, it gave me an, oh, uh, an assurance of, he gets me. You don't mm. even realize you did it, but he gets me. I don't even remember the conversation. I know, but, but you're comfortable you in your own skin, though. You're oh, very okay. comfortable around everyone. Not everybody's like that. Mm. And it's refreshing to have leadership and mentorship that you can trust that give you the okay, not give you the okay, but makes you feel like I'm safe here. Mm. No matter how successful, whatever I do, Myron's okay with that. That right there is absolutely needed. Mm. But now, like, where are the rooms where the women that are doing that? Mm. And I've learned that from you. It's like, how do you be in these spaces where you can collaborate with people and be okay? And I tell my clients, they're like, I'm coming to get you, Dr. Sonia. I'm going to bypass you. Please do. I will help you every step of the way. Mm, so get good. there and not be... Um, threatened by that. Yeah, threatened and intimidated by it. I want us, all of us, my brothers, right. my sisters, and more so the women to win. Big. Mm. Not just win, but dominate in their spaces. Mm, so good. Yeah, it's, people think that um, they have competition. Mm. But each one of us is the only one of us 
that has ever existed in the history of the world to serve the people we've been sent to serve. None of us have any competition. Competition is a construct. It is not a real concept. Mm -hmm. Wow. Oh, my goodness. The only competition we have is ourselves? That part. That part. Every, to be better every single day? And everybody can do that. Everybody can get a little better every day. And if you get a little better every day, after a whole lot of days, you're going to be a lot better. <laughs> and mess around and get in the rooms. I still keep talking about these rooms. Get in these rooms with people that are on the same pathway. It just does something to you and yeah. for it you. It removes the friction from the environment. Mm -hmm. Because what happens is if you're, if you're in an environment where your success, where people use your success, because your success isn't doing it, where people use your success as an excuse to feel threatened, which is what they like to feel anyway. Ooh, right. they hurt. Ooh. <laughs> right? Yes. So if you're in a room where people use your success as a means of feeling threatened because that's what they do anyway and that's their normal, then your mental bandwidth and your energy aura has to overcome that feeling of threatenedness that's not even real. It's just perceived in them. And so when you get in a room that doesn't have that, it's like, oh, why is it so much easier for me to move and breathe in this space? Well, this is why. Yeah. Yeah. And, and, you know, to that point, that is one of the reasons, like, you know, you and I were talking about live events. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Would I prefer to do a virtual event? Absolutely. I do them often, right, as well as you. But mm -hmm. I love there at least has to be a time where we can get in the room and get the energy. Oh, sure. Sure. I, I, I'll tell you what. Like, I know you've got a live event coming up. Um, but... You also have a book coming out. I want to save the live event piece for okay, last. Okay, I want okay, to talk okay. about that last because okay. that's, a, that's, a, that's a really interesting, fascinating. I'm looking forward to your live event. Um, but you've got a new book coming out. And here's how I can tell. Okay. Here's how I can tell if a book title is a good book title okay. or not. This is how I tell. Okay. If when they tell me the book title, I think to myself, Man, I wish I had written that. <laughs> right? That's a good I know it's a good book title. I'm like, man, I should have written that book. Like, so when you told me the title of your book, and and I've not been on the military, mm -hmm. foreign shores battlefield like you have, but I believe, and I think you've heard me talk about this before, poverty is always the result of spiritual warfare. And if if anybody watching right now, if you are in a battle for your financial freedom or for the financial freedom of your family, you are on a battlefield. And, um, and the battlefield is just, that's where, that's where you do battle. Yeah. And the enemy, the, the scripture says, the thief cometh not but for to steal, to kill, and to destroy. Which means he ain't coming unless he can kill something, steal something, yeah. or destroy something. So his purpose for coming is so that you would have less. Mm -hmm. And so lack exists because of the influence and inferences and infiltration of the enemy. Mm, that's so good. Ain't it though? And what we have to do is we have to realize, if you're in a battlefield yeah. and you don't even know you're in a battlefield, your chances of living through that battle are a whole lot less. As you say, that part. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, 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 your chance of living through a battle you don't know you're in. You're in the middle of a battlefield and you walk around eating kumquats, kumquats like there's no bombs going on around you. Hey, I'm here to let you know the enemy is at war with your financial freedom because people who have financial freedom are harder to control and the enemy wants control. Mm. Oh, okay, I just take a deep breath on that because I, I felt that one. Mm. If I'd have felt that, I think the book would have been 10 times as good. <laughs> it's good now. And from the battlefield to the boardroom, right. um, the infinite desire to win in life, business, and career. Mm. And I know when I mentioned the title to you before, you're like, the battlefield. I'm like, no, it's the battlefield that we all go through. Mm. Not just the physical battlefield, me being in the military, being in Iraq, fighting for my country, but just the spiritual warfare that we're in. And we take, we even explain, I had to explain at the beginning because I wanted uh, others who were outside of the military to understand we all have our battlefields. Don't we though? Wherever we come from in our lives, that's a battlefield. Good, bad, or indifferent. It's a it battlefield. Is, it is indeed. Going over to the boardroom is not the physical room. It's a uh, mental state, state. Mm -hmm. of where we want to be successful. Mm. And so when I was writing this, when I tell you this is some uh, it was some nights where I cried just sitting there writing through it, mm. reviewing, and like, what is happening? This has mm. probably been 10 years in the making. Wow. 
10 years I've been thinking about this book. I can go back to the notes where I started it, and I said, I gotta get this out. It is the time, from the mm. battlefield to the boardroom, because we're warring, we're fighting for our next level lives, our next level career, and definitely those next level businesses for women. Mm. The infinite desire. Someone asked, why did you just, why can't you just say desire? Because desire comes and goes. It may be there for a moment, mm. but infinite desire, it, it never nowhere. ceases. It never stops. That's how I feel. And wow. I know there's other women out there that really need to have these conversations about from the battlefield to the boardroom. Mm. What's the battlefield you need to deal with? And where's the boardroom you want to end up in? Because mm. we can have everything that our hearts desire, but we got to do some work. And it starts from the inside out. Wow. Yeah, I remember when you first came into our coaching program a couple of years ago. And, um, and then I reached out to um, Trevor. Yeah. to talk to him about you. And I thought, this sister is killing the game. She ain't killing, she ain't winning the game. She killing the game. She out here slaying the dragons. Ah. And, um, and I, I thought to myself, wow, this is really interesting that somebody at this high of a level, this is what I thought back wow. then, somebody at this high of a level of entrepreneurship, be, like you were successful before you ever heard my name. And I thought to myself, wow, she's coming to us. We better be ready. <laughs> so you were ready. Yeah, we were ready, but but I better be ready. Yeah. Right. Yeah. You, you don't want to. You don't want folk. You don't want high level folk to show up and you ain't ready. True. Right. So true. Um, so. But can I share why I came though? Please do. Can I share that? Yeah. Do do share why you came, even though I was a little difficult. Yeah, a little bit at the beginning, but it worked out. It, it taught me some things. We'll get into that. We'll get into that. But I came because I was looking, mm. and my circle is very small. It was very small then. It's mm. even smaller now. Mm. But I was looking for those, one, the person that I can get into the room with, and they're okay with what I've already worked on before I got there, mm. right? I was looking for that person who was doing a thing. We, I believe we all need someone we can follow. You can mm. say all day, I don't need, a, I don't need this. Okay. Good right. for you. But being out here by yourself is not a good thing. Whether you're in business right now or you're walking on this journey, it's not good for man to be alone. And well, I don't just mean in a relationship. Sure. I'm talking about all relationships. 100%. And I needed that community. I needed a safe place to celebrate million-dollar days right. or $2.9 million days or how about $125,000 in 15 minutes? Right. I needed a safe place where no one was going to judge me for that. Right. I heard about you. I'd already been praying before you got, that was the thing. Mm. I was already praying for Myron Golden to show up. Mm. I didn't know the name, but I was praying for that person mm. to show up. And you did. And somebody recommended, hey, you need to go over here. I know you're killing the game, but you need to go over here. And I remember coming for that year, leaving and coming back. Like, I said, no, no, no. It's time to go back. That's your brother. And mm. that's why I connected so much with mm. you. And I'm truly, I'm truly honored mm. to have the type of relationship that I have with you. Wow. At Thank a you. whole nother level. Wow. That's awesome. Thank you. I'm, I'm honored as well. Even though you cut up pretty bad at times. But. Well, and, and I, remember when you, <laughs> I remember when you first called. Because, pe like, people think, like, even this, I'm sure this happens to you. People think that because they're paying you money mm -hmm. that you now work for them. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> but you know it's true. Yes. Right? And so, so when you first came, came through, you were in New Zealand or Australia yes, or somewhere, yes. and you were doing some events, and my brother called me because he, mm -hmm. he does like all of our clients. He loves calls. telling this story. He does, <laughs> and, but he called, me, he, he called me, he's like, yeah, um, this lady, Dr. Sonia, wants to talk to you um, before she comes in. Well, she ain't coming in then. Like, I didn't, <laughs> no, no disrespect, <laughs> no disrespect, <laughs> right? But like, she ain't coming in then because I don't talk to people. That's not what I do. That's not what I'm here for. He didn't have time. That's it yeah, wasn't but... time. <laughs> It was, I, I didn't, I don't like, them. I was not willing to have our relationship start out mm -hmm. with you coaching me on how to coach you. Mm. And there are so many people True. who attempt to do that. And, like, I don't need the money. Yeah. And less than I need the money, yeah. I don't need the headache. Ooh, that right there. I remember that conversation. Yeah. And he's like, I was like, okay, here I am in New Zealand trying to figure out how do I wear this? What do I do? I got to go on stage in a few moments. I was like, you know what? If I got to jump through hoops to do this, obviously there's something that I need to know. And some people get distracted by that. Well, and I guess distracted, you don't discouraged, do disappointed, mad, Frustrated. Well, who does he think he is? Never question that. I was like, okay, God, you're about to show me something different. Mm. I came, I saw, I stayed, I left, I came back. 
And even at a higher, higher level. Yeah, yeah exactly. at a higher level too. And so it's just, I don't know, I believe, I believe what he has done has created a group of people that have been curated, if that's the word I'm that's looking the word. for. Curated is the word. And set up at this place in this space for others to come in and learn from them. Mm. And I believe what happens, and it's not just, oh, you go get somebody there above you. No, no, no. It's like, where can I learn from them? What can I gather? What relationship can I build um, from that? That, became very, that has become very important to me. Mm. And one of the biggest things I honestly was looking for, don't laugh, okay? You ready for it? I don't know if I'm ready or not. You sure? <laughs> so my thought was, I know somebody's going to, this, this is going to make people uncomfortable, but I got to say it. Okay. My goal was not just to be a billionaire. I wanted the billionaire, not lifestyle. I wanted the billionaire mindset. Mm. I wanted to think about money, opportunities, platforms differently. Because everybody, I feel like everybody's almost teaching the same thing. Mm -hmm. And so my prayer was, please, I, I need, I'm looking for a billionaire. And I'll be honest, I was looking for a woman. But I realized the woman that I was looking for didn't exist yet because I was to become her. Mm. That made me nervous. Mm. And as I think, man, I think I'm getting emotional about it. As I think about it, it's like, no, you have to go sit at somebody's feet and be able to do a few things. I hear all the time, my oh, gosh, Dr. Son, you have this masculinity and this femininity that merges very well. But I hear more about, well, you're too hard, you're too harsh, or your delivery, or what have you. And I said, but this is who God's made me. I do it in love. I want more of us, especially women, to win. And so if he's to change me and to shift me into this space, I'll go into that space. Mm. But that's one of the reasons, again, that I came. This mm. the one of the reasons, again, that I trust you with my life. Mm. I trust you with the lives of my family. You've met my family now. Mm -hmm. um, life is just, it's just different. So that's why I came, because I see you at this place of billions upon billions, not just the money, but there's a whole movement that you're creating. And wherever you go, I'm, I'm there. Where are we going? <laughs> We're going someplace good. <laughs> exactly. So, and in fact, and with that segue, why don't we go right now okay. and help a bunch of women that are watching this right yes. now on YouTube schedule their own payday. Because you've got an event coming up called Schedule Your Payday in Atlanta coming up just in a few days now. Yes. Um, like, what is that event about? How long is the event? <laughs> Oh, so, Who is it for? Like, so Schedule Your Payday is for payday. women entrepreneurs, thought leaders, and business owners. Mm -hmm. You know, typically I normally would help, um, I would say, coaches, speakers, and authors, but I realize there's so many other women that are out there that are in business that are missing the point because they don't mm -hmm. want to be associated with a coach. Mm -hmm. But I believe we're all thought leaders. Sure. With, regardless of what business you're launching or you're starting. So schedule your payday is just, just that. How do we begin to help you schedule your payday so you're not sitting back? Because most of the business owners, the majority of them that I know that are women, may have a second job. Mm. Excuse me. They have a job in their business. They're cheating on their job in their business right now. Mm. And so if they're doing that, I want to show them how do they schedule their paydays, mm. whether it's that... Every Monday, you want to get paid? Come on now. Is it every day you want to get paid? Come on now. Is it I every like that weekend? one better. Every day? I like every that one Every hour? Better. How about every hour? I like that one even more better. And what does that look like? So schedule your payday is about leveraging, right, the skills and the gifts that we already have. I believe that we all have that. Mm -hmm. I believe there's a life experience and a knowledge that we bring to the table that we can use that to schedule our payday. Okay. And then it's all about legacy. You said it before. This is not just for us. It's for generations to come. 100%. So it's about legacy. And last but not least, liberation. Mm. It's time for some financial freedom, freedom up in here, up, up in, in here. here. Up in here. Let's go. It's come to a time and a place that we as women... Yeah. Get that's, the opportunity to do some things amazing. So good. I, you know, when you say financial freedom, every time I hear the word freedom, you know the, the synonym that comes to my mind? No, what is it? It's the word choice. Mm. When you have financial freedom, you have a financial choice. You don't have to pick the cheapest thing. Ooh. You don't have to pick the smallest thing. Yeah. You don't have to pick the thing that's in the booth in the back in the corner in the dark. You just pick the thing you desire to have and say, I'll take that one. Or you can say, I'll take two of those yeah. or three of those. Because... You're no longer reading menus from right to left. Mm. Mm. You're no longer going through life p 
picking up leftovers because that's, quote, all you can afford. Um, I was sharing on a YouTube video that I did earlier today um, how when we first got, it wasn't even on a YouTube video, it was on my challenge, when I first got started in entrepreneurship, this is my pre-entrepreneurship entrepreneurship. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so I often talk about when I first got started as an entrepreneur, I started out selling insurance. Well, before I started selling insurance, mm -hmm. I stumbled upon selling cars out of my garage. Really? Yeah, so what I, because I knew how to, I grew up, we only had raggedy cars. So mm -hmm. I learned how to work on cars so I could get from point A to point B. And you, like one of the rules that we had in our house, you never get in a car and go anywhere without a toolbox in the trunk. Wow. Because if something breaks, you want to be able to fix it, mm -hmm. right? Which, is, which is, was just normal. That, that, that didn't seem odd to me. Yeah. That was just normal. Now, like there's a toolbox in the car. Do I, can I find a screwdriver when I need one? Like <laughs> it's, yeah. it's a totally different experience. But what I do is I buy old raggedy cars. And I'd change the fender, I'd change the bumper, I'd change the transmission, or even change the engine if I had to. I'd paint it if I needed to, change the interior, whatever I had to do. I'd go to back and forth to the junkyard, get the parts I needed. Wow. Uh, go to the auto parts store, get the parts I needed, and take this old raggedy piece of hunk of metal, turn it into something that somebody desires, advertise it in the classified ads of the newspaper. Wow. And then somebody would call, and then they'd come see it, and then hopefully they'd pay it. They passed. And I was talking about feast or famine, feast or famine. And I remember in those days, if you can imagine this, like somebody come by and they'd buy a car from me for $900. Maybe I bought it for $200. Wow. And maybe I put $200 in it and I just sold it for $900. It made $500 profit. We would always go celebrate and we would go shopping, me and my wife. Wow. We didn't go shopping at Neiman Marcus. We didn't go to Macy's. Hmm. We didn't even go to Kmart or Walmart. We went to Amvets, Salvation Army, and Goodwill. And we went on a little shopping spree to just go buy some stuff when we made money. That was my pre-entrepreneurship, entrepreneurship days. Wow. Yeah. I can't even imagine yeah. seeing you. But hey, we all had those humble oh, beginnings, right? It's so interesting, too. I just thought of this. Like, one of the most life-changing experiences I ever had was on one of those shopping sprees when we went to Goodwill. And I found all these, this little basket with all these motivational tapes in it. You never shared I know. That. I just thought of it just now. And what it, were those motivational tapes about? Okay. So, there's, so there was a bunch of Amway tapes. Okay. I remember Amway. And there was one in there by this guy named Jim Rohn who I'd never heard of. Wow. And it was called The Day That Changes Your Life. We must have wove that thing out backwards and forwards. <laughs> Every time we got in the car, we was listening to Jim Rohn and The Day Changes Cassette Your tape? Life. Cassette tape? Cassette tape. Wow. Cassette tape. This was back in like the late 90s. Like 90, this was, actually, I was actually a pastor then. Um, but yeah, went shopping, got these cassette tapes, and I was, listening, I was listening to these tapes in the car, and I listened to Jim Rohn, and I was like, the day that changed your life. And I loved listening to Jim Rohn. And then I found like some cassette series by Jim Rohn, and I bought a bunch of different cassette series by Jim Rohn. And believe it or not, before he died, I got to speak on the platform with Jim Rohn really? three times. You got pictures? Three different times. No, I didn't. What? We didn't have cell phones. Oh and yeah, stuff that's back right. Then. That's right. That's like, right. You didn't have cameras with you everywhere you went. That, that, that was this was before that. <laughs> that is a legend. Yeah. I can remember. Uh, I don't. I think I ordered it. It came in this case, mm -hmm. and this was I was retiring from the military, and I got it because I was looking for what I was going to do when mm -hmm. I grow up. Mm -hmm. And he was talking about speaking and all of this, and I was like. Where has this man been right. my whole life? Right. Different environment that I was right. in. Right. And so just going to creating the environments. Here we go again. Imagine if you would have had the opportunity to be in a room with him early as you were building. Uh, it would have been amazing. It would have been mind-blowing. I, yeah. I got to go hear him live once before I ever got on stage with him. And that was amazing. There were probably 800 people there. I'm in the audience and I'm like, this guy is living his best life. That he was. Yeah. And he didn't have... Ads back then didn't have Facebook ads, Instagram, social ads, media, social media, and we have all that we stuff at our fingertips. Yeah. At our fingertips, the, now. and literally the world is at our door right now. And and so thinking about Jim Rohn events, thinking about events in general, you've got an event coming up. I know for me, mm -hmm. live events that I've gone to have been turning points in my life yes. on multiple occasions. Yes. When women come to the schedule your payday event, I believe yes, it'll be a turning point for many of them, oh, yeah. many of them 10 years, 20 years into the future. They're going to point back at this event and they're going to say, there was an event that Dr. Sonia Stribling did in Atlanta, Georgia in 2024 that my life changed forever. Wow. And here's the, here's, here's, here's the sad part. 
there are some women who are watching this video right mm -hmm. now who are contemplating whether or not to come, and they're not going to show up. Of course, there's always people Right, that's like always that. the case. Mm -hmm. There are other women who are contemplating it, and it's hard for them. It's not going to be easy for them, yeah. but they're going to show up anyway. And as a result of doing something difficult on the front end, yeah. eventually they're going to get to live on easy street. It's the sacrifices, though. Mm -hmm. Come on now. It, it's... If, if I look back over, and I can't speak for all women, so let me make sure I say this. But for the 500,000 women that I've had the opportunity to serve over the last three years, mm -hmm. let me speak for them. It is not going to be easy because it's not just going to fall in your lap. Right. You're going to have to make a shift in your calendar, uh, maybe the job that you have, maybe some responsibilities that you have to sacrifice to get in a room with other like-minded people to be able to, it's okay to be amazing. Mm. They encourage you. There's something about a, a room full of powerful women. Just bringing the power of all of that in one room, I believe we would change the world. Mm -hmm. Not just change our financial futures, but change mm -hmm. the world as we know it right now. Because we, I see things out there on social media and in the world. It's, it's got to be a change. So events like this, and the reason why I created these events, and I'll be honest, events are not easy. Woo! Can I get a witness? Amen. <laughs> yeah, they're, yeah. they're not, but they're needed. And I sit back, I'm like, why are you doing this? There's a why. Mm -hmm. And it's not just for me, because we could just sit and do a virtual and be good. Eight days a week and twice on Sunday. What? Five days, uh, five, uh, every five hours I can do one. Let me stop. That's too much. That's way too much. Right. But really start looking at this live event as this could be my turning point. And this will be my turning point if I make the sacrifice to be there. So I'm sure you can remember days when the days in your life way back when, when you were not a multimillionaire, when you were not making boatloads of money. Yeah. And I'm sure you had aspirations of living a better life. Yes. But I, I, I want to know if this is true for you because okay. it's definitely true for me. Okay. Would you say that once you had that breakthrough and you started making millions of dollars, would you say it was so much better than you could have possibly conceived, There's, the difference is not even measurable, or would you say, oh, it's exactly what I expected? Oh, absolutely be? not. It was so different. I couldn't even have imagined this. I believe God does that on purpose. Yes. I believe he, he allows us to make a decision, not just a choice, make a Come decision to do a thing. And get into those spaces and those places so he can then show it to you. Because if he showed it to us right now, some of us would be afraid. It would freak, us out. It would freak oh, yeah. us out. We'd yeah. be like, get him. We'd be hiding among the stuff. He'd be showing me. <laughs> like, no, 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 I'm not ready. What do I have to do to do that? And then right. it's, like, it's a progress and a process that we go through. So, yeah, it is so much better. I couldn't have imagined. But I tell um, those that are listening, do it scared, number one. Mm -hmm. Make the sacrifice, number two. Mm -hmm. And number three, start looking at dreaming so big it scares you. Mm. And knowing that God himself has to get involved. Mm. Yeah, why would you have a plan that doesn't even need God? It's so small you don't even need God for it. Like, you can do that by yourself. But then some go on the flip side. It's like they're just waiting on him to do it. I'm just well, going to let you do it. No, he wants you to get involved yeah, He ain't going to do your it. part. <laughs> He, he, that. You can't do his part. He ain't going to do your part. Right? That in itself. And so it's just, I'm truly honored to be mm. able to do something like this. It will be one of many. Mm. I've done events before, but not like this. This mm. one is so different because it's an intentional way to help women level up their finances. Mm. There's conversation, it is said. And there that, are levels in this whole finance Oh, game. yes. Conversations where you have where I got to get rid of some money, not hide it. I'm talking about legally. I got I to gotta buy this. I got to buy a plane. First right. time I heard somebody say that. Yeah, I got to buy a plane. I gotta, if I don't buy a plane, I'm going to get the money to the government. I gotta, <laughs> I'm looking for that problem. Right. I'm, ready, I'm right. ready for that to be right. a problem, but it is just helping. I, I just, I can't explain it. You have to experience it. Right. It's not something that we can just ex just share with you here, but it's getting in the rooms and having some amazing speakers to be there like yourself to really transform. And I'll be honest, you were the only male on that stage. And someone else, but I thought it was for women. And I go to a lot of women empowerment events, and there are more men than there that are women. Mm -hmm. And so I have some amazing speakers, uh, women that are bringing things to the forefront about le legacy, leveraging their gifts and their talents, and about liberation. How do we get them to their financial freedom? Yeah, I'm, I'm actually looking forward to being there. Um, and, and you're in one of my coaching programs. Yeah. And you know, as well as anybody, there are more women in my coaching programs mm -hmm. than there are men. Absolutely. And in my highest level coaching program, the Royal Family, which is a million dollars a year, there are only All three women. 
of y'all, and they're all women. You know, I should say y'all are all women, right? Why do you think that is? Um, you ever thought about it? Why do I think that is? Mm. Wow, that's a good question. Um, I think, yeah, I, I no. I ooh, can I help? Ooh, ooh, yeah, ooh, please ooh. do, because I'm stuck. I was like, I, I, I thought of something. I thought, no, that can't be it. I, I thought of something else. No, that spot. can't be it. No, I don't have any idea. What? I why? believe we're the biggest consumers, number one. That is true. Number one. Number two. Women, women buy more of everything than men. True. Okay. Absolutely. Okay. But then the second thing, and, and this is not to negate the fact that men don't have desires. I believe there's an innate desire in us that he has fed and seeded in us, in our mother's womb, mm -hmm. that if we are really, really in touch with the more factor, and the more factor, I want to be better than I was yesterday. Mm -hmm. The more and better factor, I want to be better. And this is not a competition with someone else. This is a competition with me and who I was yesterday. If we're really striving to be all that he has called us to be, not the army, I can say that, be all you can be, but what God has called us to be, I believe there's an innate desire in us just to be better. Mm -hmm. And finances is one of the areas. Mm -hmm. There's not a... I got to go get a husband to be successful. I'm just being real, Byron. I got to do this and I need somebody else. But if we really look at this and really tap into, that's why we become, I came into the program. It's like, I want to be better. If somebody has the, the audacity to have a million dollar program, wait, hold up. And I've always been that person. I'm going to be your number one student. Mm. I'm not thinking about everybody else. And I don't, maybe that's just a competitiveness of me. Maybe you say that about me all the time, but no, it's not with anyone else. It's just with me. How sure. do I really strive to be well, that? better your best. Yes. And so I believe that's the reason why you're getting or more women come to the forefront. We can dominate some things as women. And this yeah. is not against anybody else. If we all came together, we could change some things. And I mean like that mm. overnight. No offense to the men. We need y'all. But I believe there's some things that we can oh. do. Oh, I'm, I'm not offended. I'm all right. I'm all <laughs> he right. He said, Do I'm okay. Yeah. I'm okay. I got nothing to prove, nothing to lose, nothing to hide, nothing Absolutely. to gain. I'm all right. That's what I love about you. <laughs> You're like, I don't really care, but whatever. Y'all do y'all thing. Do your thing, yeah. <laughs> if you can pass me, please do it in a hurry. I'll be, I'll be, I'll be the first one to clap for you. Exactly. Like, go, way to go, 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 way to go. go, go. I know them. <laughs> <laughs> for sure. Yeah. For sure. Yeah. Um, yeah, I, I think you're on to something. I think also that um, um, not only do women like buy more things than men in general, but there are more women in the world who control the finances of the family than men. Where they at? Because I don't know too many. I'm, I'm sorry. Go ahead. Really? Uh, can we talk about that for a second? Sure. Whew, they're not going to like me on the ub 2 right now. That's all good. 61% of women uh -huh. would rather talk about their death than talk about money. Really? Yes, sir. Wow. It is not in all households, not yeah. at all, but for majority, mm -hmm. there's probably some of them you are watching right now. You don't know what's coming in the household. You don't know what's going out. You don't know what's going on. And I, I'm not saying that is a good or a bad thing. I'm saying it's a it thing. It is a thing, yeah. Some don't know. Some still have to ask for permission to do anything in their household. And well, they have a job as well. But, but believe it or not. Yes. So this is something I know for a fact uh -oh. from a brother who sells the brothers. M most men have to ask for permission too. Oh, really? Oh, yes, ma'am. Yes, ma I got to ask my wife. Like, I, Tell them about that story about being on a golf course. I was literally, I was, so I was literally at the driving range, getting ready to go play golf. Some guy comes up to me at our country club, he says, you must not be married. I'm like, that's a really weird way to start a conversation with somebody you don't know. Wow. I said, yeah, I've been, and at that time, I said, yeah, I've been married for 35 years. Why would you think I'm not married? He said, and your wife lets you play golf this much? I was so confused. I, d I didn't even understand how to comprehend the question. <laughs> let's me? And I said to him, let's me? What am I, in the third grade? I said, we don't do permission in our house. My wife doesn't let me do anything. I don't let her do anything. She's a full-grown woman. I'm a full-grown man. I love that. If my wife wants to buy a house on our way home from the gym, she can show it to me when she's done closing. 
And the only problem you're going to have is she should have got two or something you uh, said before. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's all you needed, baby? Hey, I am so over the whole idea of getting permission. Yeah. When, I, when I graduated from high school and left college and decided yeah. that I wasn't going back to my parents' house anymore, oh, I was done asking for permission to do anything. That's so good. <laughs> But some of the women that, you know, they share, like, I need to talk to my husband. Can you share? And so what I begin to do is share, okay, how I'm do you have this conversation? You guys do the same wow. thing. It's not, the that's ones not a man or, to, it's not a man or woman conversation. It's some of the gentlemen that I worked with before, and I was like, hey, did you talk to your wife? He said, no, I'll tell her later. Right. Well, but there, just, I know guys like that, and mm -hmm. I know women like that. Wow. Right? So It's good to see them both. Then. Yes. Yes, it is. Yes, it is. And I know more. It, seem, it feels like to me there are more guys that have to ask for permission than women. No, and yes, I'm saying there is more women that I have know. to ask I'm for permission. I'm just telling you. I'm just See, telling you. See, we're having this whole conversation. It, it is a real thing. It is a real thing that grown folks asking grown folks for permission. How come we just can't work together on that this? Part. It's like, hey, you know. Why can't you just support me and I'll support you and we'll celebrate each other. And then we'll, you know, we'll like look at how we did when we get to the house. And if it's something just like, I know some, when I was um, my first marriage and I'm on my encore marriage, let me, let me make sure I say that, the encore marriage. And one of the conversations that I had with him was, hey, let's say, I can remember when I came to the Million Dollar Program, I, I shared it with him later. But before, when we were dating, before I became his fiance, I said, hey, I got a question for you. What if I wanted to go, and I was already coaching, I had been on television, I had been doing all these things. What if I wanted to go and invest in a coaching program? And it was $100,000. What would be your expectation of me if we were married or dating, whatever? He looks up at me. He's like, I can't tell you what to do with your money. He said, I've seen what you do when you invest. I can't sit over here and say, hey, you shouldn't do that. I'm Sounds watching like a very you. very wise man. He is. He very much is. I know is. he is. I've met him. Yes, he is. <laughs> He's a good dude. And he just sat back and I'm like, wow. But I've had conversations and that's a question that I ask. Hey, what would you, well, that's a lot. And we got to think about it. You know, we got these bills. And I'm not saying that's not the truth, but I needed that type of partnership and relationship so I didn't have this struggle of I got to choose my marriage or I got to choose investing and helping the legacy of my family. I needed somebody who was going to come into this like, hey, I've seen you do what you do. I believe in you. Let's do this. Absolutely. That part. Yeah. And so now I, I tell him later. I don't. Right. Yeah. Make yeah. sure. Because I know God has given me a vision that he didn't give my husband. Right. And so now moving through this, it's a, it's a totally different ball game, And I appreciate this level of respect and this level of support going through this process. And encouragement and all the rest oh, of it yes. goes with that. Yeah, yes, because if sure. you don't have that, I can only imagine what you're dealing with. I, yeah, I can only imagine. But I can imagine and I know because I've had the conversations with people who don't have that level of support. It's a rough That's one. not fun. No, That's not, not fun. at all. Yeah. Not at all. Yeah. So if you're watching right now and you're thinking about, okay, would it be beneficial for me to attend Schedule Your Payday? I would say unequivocally yes. I already know one of the things I'm going to talk about when I'm there. I'm not going to share it, but it's going to be next level. Me too. Something I've never shared before. Ooh, I can't wait. I can't it's wait. It's going to be next level. Um, it will help you have breakthroughs in your mindset, in your skill set, and with your tool set, the likes of which you've never had before. Um, and so I'm just I'm look I'm looking forward to the whole thing. Oh, and it's going to be good. It's good. It's going to be on a level. For it's those good. who come that are in business either whether you're launching or you're trying to take it, not trying, you're going to take, take it to new that. heights. Yes. A schedule your payday power move is going to be a change, is a game changer for your business, for your business and your life. And more so, not just mindset. Mm -hmm. Is there such a thing as a money set? Well, if there wasn't, we can, call, we can make one right yeah, now. Yeah, it's just how do you set your money to go out there and do things mm -hmm. for you? It's just, it's just time. In 2024, it's just time for, time for more women to step up to the plate and have more support doing this, whether it's at home or in rooms, building mm. their businesses, building their network and their net worth. Mm -hmm. It's just time. It's it overdue. That, it's, it's that time. Yeah. Good stuff. Good stuff, Dr. Sonia. I'm going to recommend that folks come. Dr. Sonia, I'm sure you're looking forward to meeting all these women when they come. I'm oh, looking forward absolutely. to meeting y'all. It's going to be... Um, I'm looking forward to sharing things with you that I've learned on my journey. I love the fact that I've been, lived a life of enough experiences yeah. that I don't have to teach any theory, right? I love the fact that you've had enough experiences in your life, you don't have to teach any theory. 
we can teach people the things we've seen, the things we've done, the things we know because we've done them. Not just something we read in somebody's book last week and now we're going to turn it into a seminar. I love that for these people who are going to be coming to this event. Absolutely. There was a, a I'll share this. When I was in the military, there was a, a sergeant major. He's like the senior advisor in the military. Mm -hmm. And he said something so profound it has stuck with me. He said, you don't decide if you're a good leader. Your followers do. 100%. As we're building our businesses, we have to decide if we're truly going to be a leader. Mm. And if you're going to be a leader, when you look back behind you, there should be people there. Mm. Matter of fact, there should be people beating down your door to join the movement that you've created. Mm. It's just time for that in this season. This is a season of elevation. This is a season of more, and this is a season of scheduling your payday. So in order to attend Schedule Your Payday, where do they need to go to register? Well, they can go to drsonyabrands.com, or they can just click a link somewhere around this video, and there will be a link there for them as well. Okay, let's go. Let's go help some women schedule their payday. Oh, absolutely. We will look forward to seeing you at the Schedule Your Payday event.